Construction is a hugely important sector in the sustainability debate, particularly as it's considered resource intensive and high on emissions. German company DFH is in the prefabrication business, creating homes with sustainability, energy efficiency and ecological standards in mind. I'm Andrew Wilson and I sat down with the DFH management team here at COP28 to talk about the future of housing. So COP28, way bigger than previous years, a lot of that's due to the private sector, energy, sustainability, all these issues and construction of course is a huge part of that, so there's plenty for you to talk about here. Yeah, it's a huge part, you said it. We have a very energy consuming, uh, consuming product and we want to learn from other industries. We want to see if we can do way better and we are a sustainable company, so everything we can learn we will see how it works in practice. Okay, Moritz? I think learning is the, the best word for that. COP is a nice place for exchanging ideas, coming together with different cultures from different countries with hundreds of personalities. So we are just uh, ready for after discussions and to learn whatever. You're here to listen. Yeah, Great. we are. Let's take this to the studio, talk about it a bit more. Yeah, Great. let's do it. Moritz, Sasha, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. First of all, Sasha, why don't you give us a bit of a background to DFH, the concept, the ethos behind it? Before I tell you what we are doing, I will tell you something about the German housing market. If you believe uh, the people in Germany, the traditional German house is made of solid concrete or stone. But if you look in the heart of old villages or towns, you can see half timbered houses. So these houses are mostly a few hundred years old. The oldest ones are 700 years old. And that, that are 700 years where people lived in it, are still living in it. And what we do is almost the same as our ancestors, uh, ancestors did. We build houses from wood. We can build one family houses, two family houses, multi-story buildings. And we think and we know that this material is very sustainable and you can build very durable houses with a um, low footprint in energy consumption. And that's what we are doing by now. Building houses for our customers and building houses for investors who wants to have a sustainable and energy efficient home. So we talk a bit more about the wood in a moment. First of all, Moritz, you know, your company has a lot of sustainability built into how it operates. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I love to answer that question because, uh, of course, some years ago we were a carpenter business and we had a great transformation into an industrial business and I think if everyone is honest then this transformation never goes in this way that sustainability is one of the first topics you have many things to do but at least since 2010 we put a great focus on the sustainability and we evolved like our company did in the sustainability fields and therefore we did it in every detail of our company of course we 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 did of the firstly we did the the biggest things to do but uh, when i say every detail of our day-to-day -day work then it means that we're of course using only electric vehicles that we have photovoltaic system on all of our roofs so as a German market leader, we understood that we have a great responsibility. Of course, a responsibility for our employees and our customers, but also, of course, for the environment. And therefore, we did everything we, we could and we can, and we strive to do everything that comes in the future to make a better sustainable product, but also be a better sustainable company. I mean, people forget, of course, there's a lot of energy used in constructing uh, a building as well as living in it. And people tend to concentrate on the energy it uses while it's being used, but it takes a lot to make it in the first place. And you believe timber has a real advantage in that respect. Of course it does. Uh, if you look at, at how the, the material is like brought to us, then you can see that timber is like a natural regrowing material, while stone and concrete isn't. It's just not possible to regrow. It's just 
possible to remake. And this making process consumes lots of energy, while on the other hand, con uh, timber construction only has much less uh, energy. And it's regrowing. For example, in Germany, when, when you build a wooden house for like a one or two family, then it takes only 23 seconds to regrow the, the wood that is used there. And regrow means infinite. So you can do it like multiple times, every, every time again. And therefore, timber, we think timber is the only uh, material that should be used uh, in construction. And it works? It's easy to insulate? I mean, does it have those advantages once the house is built? Of course, you can insulate it even better than a concrete or a stone building because you can build it the way that uh, even within the walls, there's a lot of free space. And this free space can be filled with the best isolation, isolation material there is. And uh, therefore, we can do yeah, like better insulation than concrete or stone buildings. I mean, Sasha, energy is a big subject anywhere, gatherings like COP28, but you know, there are other sectors, the agriculture sector, but also yes. the construction sector, that eventually there will be more focus on because we need houses and we will come to learn, of course, that they can be a real consumer of energy, both in construction and uh, also in living in. What sort of conversations would you like people to be having about the construction industry and how important is housing policy? So housing policy is very important by now. We have a massive housing shortage by now, and we need to build houses for people to live in. We need migration from, from the outside, we need uh, homes, and we can't focus on any kind of construction. We can't build any home from stone or concrete, as we said. We need the timber home, because in the mess we need the houses. We need to have a look at the environment. And at this point, this is uh, the point, uh, the thing I want to see here. I want to see other industries thinking the same way as we thinking. We want to go on new tracks and we want to see if we can do any better, if we can do much more efficiently constructions on the outside. And that's possibly, that's what we want to see here. And we want to discuss with some people want to see what other industries are, are saying about our industry because we are in the industry, we can't see the whole thing from the inside. It's like in the Milky Way, we can't see the whole thing. And so we want to see how others, other industries see us and what they are saying to us, what we can do better by now. In addition, we think that one big point is missed by the governments. And this is that the energy cons consumption of the house is only seen for the time the house is used. There are only few governments that see the energy consumption when the house is fabricated. And we would like to see a whole life cycle perspective so that wood or timber can really make an, a difference to concrete. Because if you look at concrete conduct, production sites, there's always a lot of energy consum consumption while timber construction, there's much less energy consumption. And this would make a big difference in the whole life cycle. A, a number of people here might be interested in your policy of prefabrication. Yes. What are the advantages of prefabrication? You can proceed the whole material in optimal conditions. You can uh, test the product. You can see the whole process. You can look at the costs, at the time, and at the, materi uh, at the material you are using. You can see where are your problems and you can always improve your product when you have the prefabrication. And at least on the con construction side, the building can be built in less than three or four days. It's finished from the outside and ready for the work inside. So you have less time to build and you have the perfect product because you have no weighing on the, on the walls while building it, it's finished, like I said, in three days and you have a perfect product on the construction site. I guess one advantage is that it's, there are fewer surprises. There's no surprises when you're making it in the optimal conditions. You can control yes. the process. We can control the process, we can check the process, we can improve the process step by step to be more efficiently 
at the end. And the house is planned like in every little detail. So that means that when we are constructing it in our on our production side, then there is the minimization of failures. You can just do it exactly how it should be done, then bring it to the construction site and everything works out. So therefore, the, the failure possibilities are much less than if you do it in a conventional way. Is it also uh, possible to kind of plan mass housing kind of groupings using the prefabrication? Of course, that's, that's no problem. You can, can do like uh, hundreds of meters of houses put together. We see it as one unit just connected to the next one. But we also have a lot of experience in doing multi-storage building, buildings. Uh, we, have, uh, we have experience in doing it on whole areas and just um, for investors, uh, if you like, uh, they have uh, one acre or two acres of land and they want to have lots of, of uh, apartments there. And then they come to us, we plan it for them and we do it till the, the last, last step and they come with the key and make it open and then the, the people home can move home. in. Home <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, how far are you in Germany down the line with this, with people accepting or embracing this option? I think in Germany we are, yeah, not like the whole European market. We have a market share of 25% by now for one and two family houses built of wood, but um, that's nearly the highest percentage in, in, in Europe. That's impressive for us because when I entered the industry we were about 19 or 20 percent but I had a meeting with a guy from uh, Hungary last week and he said in Hungary there were only at least 10 percent wooden houses and that's not enough. He says of course he wants to earn some money but of course he also said it's not sustainable. We have massive buildings with concrete and stone and he wants to see Hungary in, in a few years like we are standing in Germany with a very sustainable housing market. Moritz, you talked about sustainability earlier on. What are your targets for the future? What plans do you have uh, going down a couple of decades perhaps? So we have like two really big sustainable goals. First thing is that we want to show that profitability and sustainability can go hand in hand. We want to show it as a good example for other companies all around the world to help build an, a better environment in the construction area. And second thing is that we of course want to build more because building more means that we have a more environmentally friendly building, not only one and two family houses but also in multi-storage story buildings and therefore can make even a bigger impact on the on the bigger goal, not only for us, but for the whole environment. Great, thanks very much. Thanks.